What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to GazetteSports.com and the Press Telegram. It's Mike and Tyler, and this high school football video is brought to you by Naples Rip Company, the perfect place to cater your team's next event. Long Beach Poly, Compton, the two oldest schools in the Morling, and one of the oldest traditions in sports, the homecoming. Long Beach's oldest high school, 120th homecoming celebration for the Jackrabbits, so we've got the band, the cheerleaders, the tradition. We've got everything, Tyler. I would, I would bet that not one person has been to all of the homecomings, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. It's safe to say, if they had, they would still be talking about this one. Compton Tar Babes in, their head coach, realer than a 100 emoji, Elijah Asante, <laughs> knows he's got a tough task as he faces these jackrabbits and a scoreboard in the background that would be talked about after the game. Yeah, that's charged up and ready to go, and it needs to be. Here on the opening kickoff, an interesting choice. Compton declines to start from the 35 as this goes out of bounds for illegal procedure. Actually, a great decision because Christian Swint, the freshman, is going to take this thing, and the way he swint was to the left, and he's going to go 90 yards to Wait. set the Tar Babes up with great field Wait, position. Which swint is that, Tyler? It's not Kevlin Swint. It's not Cameron Swint. That's Christian Swint. Get used to him, the freshman playmaker for the Tar Babes, and they are feeling themselves early on, as they should be with that big play. Well, he gets him down to the 10, and then Josiah DeVay, Royce Anson, wow, who saw this one coming? Tar Babes up 6-0, less than 20 seconds into the game, as the Jackrabbits looking a little bit stunned. But a big return for Justin Calhoun, and then he makes the nice move and goes in for a 20-yard touchdown. Just like that, Jackrabbits take the lead 7-6, that is not the last touchdown in this game. No, it is not. And another big return by uh, by Calhoun here is going to set up his twin brother, Jeremy Calhoun, as the Calhouns have been a big part of the poly offense this uh, this season. And, I, I mean, I've actually heard that the Calhouns are now hosting their family reunions in the end zone. Any truth to that? It's a nice space. It's very green in there, you know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of a room to I, – I, I think it makes sense. It, it makes a little bit of sense. Third and long for Josh Love, the quarterback, a big-time completion to Big E, Iman Marshall, back his first game back after that injury against Corona Centennial. That love finding Johnny Rucker, and that's going to work out. Yes, the Rucker punch as he goes on the screen and finds his way into the end zone. Very explosive offense this season for Polly. They were on once again, 21 to six. Love seven for eight, 167 yards, and two touchdowns in the game. Very efficient overall. And I thought the matchup here was Biggie against Swint, but the, Jason Nettles tips the ball to himself in the end zone and scores, and, you know, sometimes that stuff happens. 28-6, Jackrabbits still in the first quarter. The first quarter, it seemed like it would never end, Tyler. Yeah, Calhoun is going to run in for his second touchdown, is weaving his way into the end zone. It's still in the first quarter, and it's 35-6, to minute to go. I mean, a lot of points here early going. Second quarter, second string. This may be a theme in the Moore League. Nolan McDonald, the sophomore quarterback, they like a lot for the future. He's got uh, he's transferred from, from Corona Centennial. He can run it, as he shows here. Didn't see anything, so pulls it down and is going to get a big gain here. You see how deep in Compton territory Polly was on the start of these drives. That's That was the case. Their average starting position was the Compton 35, which is going to make it easy for stuff like this to happen. James Brooks, the powerhouse. Linebacker turn, running back turn, monster. He goes in for... <laughs> For his first score right there and it was going to be Brooks again he had 10 carries for 136 yards and four touchdowns hasn't gotten a lot of carries this season so he was happy to be able to put points on the board yeah if T-Pain's a rapid turn sanger then JB is a linebacker turn running back tonight 10 rushes 136 and four touchdowns for Brooks as you mentioned happy to tote that rock a little bit and uh, with Biggie back and healthy He's going to go back and get this punt and have an opportunity to do some damage. Well, uh, this looks like one of the nicer touchdowns we've had this season as he changes direction a couple times, kind of carving a signature in the turf. But you see there, Katu Humphrey, the late block in the back, very unnecessary. He's going to call that thing back. He could definitely have gotten that touchdown, but instead, penalty flag brings it back. And give credit to Duvet sticking his nose in there, and the Tar Babe offense kept fighting up until the end of that half. They set up Gabino Barrera for the 25-yard field goal. That would have been good from 40. And Compton now has scored more points against Polly than the entire league did last season as it's 63-9 going to the half. That's a nice number for the Babes. Kind of interesting that there's positives for both teams there, to be honest. Dejon Logan opened the second half with a long touchdown return, and uh, the starters are back in for the first series of the second half, a subject of some debate, I am sure. Calhoun... 
with the run. Nice run, weaving his way through traffic to get the touchdown. Towing in my Jordans. He stays alive. He and Brooks combined for 19 carries, 242 yards, and seven touchdowns. Good for the Jackrabbits. They'd struggled running it. The uh, youngest running back, Marquise Money Mason, comes in to get a score. And then it's Jackie Jones on the return, who's going to make this thing dangerous. We're approaching 100 after this 80-yard touchdown return. And uh, interesting to gauge the audience's reaction. Did they want that to happen? Did they not? I couldn't really tell, to be completely honest. Right. Well, the touchdowns were just coming so fast, thanks to all the special team scores, that really don't take much time off the clock. It was running for the entire second half. Aaron Shamplin with the interception, and again, Mike, it's going to set up a very short field for the Jackrabbits, and an opportunity to get ever closer to that century mark as there's still four minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's going to be Mason, the uh, one of uh, several lower lower level players called up for this game, just hits that left sideline and outruns the, the Compton defense, his second score of the night, and again, here's where you're going to have a lot of conversation, because Polly scores another touchdown to go up 97-9. On the, t on the next play, the backup quarterback's the holder. He drops the ball and then picks it up and runs into the end zone for a two-point conversion. The poly coach is distinctly displeased with the move. The kids had had dropped the ball. It was instinct. I'm sorry. But obviously, it doesn't necessarily make the program look good going for two up 97-9. to nine. And there it is, man. The clock ran the whole second half, like you said. But Polly still scoring the most, most points they ever have since 1921 in a 105-0 win that year. This one's 99-9, the fourth highest point total in Polly's long history. And Compton coach Elijah Sante uh, was pretty positive, actually. Yeah, he was focusing on the positives from this game, that they did get those points more than any team had against Polly since uh, 2012. So he's looking on the bright side and trying to focus on getting better and things outside of football, not just the final score. He, he specifically said he didn't feel like the Jackrabbits ran the score up. He said we just couldn't stop them. That's what happens when we run into a program of that level and we're not developed enough yet. Interesting back and forth. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of conversation. Thanks again to our sponsors, Naples Rib Company and Papa Lucci's, for putting the eat in Second Street and, of course, allowing us to bring these videos to you. So what do you think, Long Beach? I'm sure we're going to hear your opinion, but feel free. Get at us. Twitter, Facebook, email, comments on this YouTube video. Let us know what you think. Was this an okay game or not? Next week, Polly visits Jordan while Compton hosts Lakewood. A lot of great more league action left to go this season. If you want all that coverage, keep it locked right here. You're home for Long Beach Sports.